Hey friends, it's me, the Ebony Otaku, the well-rounded nerd. Going to do something a little different for this Warhammer Wednesday. I've done a couple of videos around getting started in the hobby. Like, how do you get started in Warhammer? It's a whole thing <laughs> to get started. Uh, but I've got a couple of boxes that I've not put together yet. So I thought I'd build a few figures with you just so you can see, like, some of the work that's involved. I'm not going to prime them today. One, because I don't have time. <laughs> and two, I'm not wearing my painting clothes. Like, homegirl's going to work out uh, later this evening, so she needs to stay clean. <laughs> so, but there there are steps in getting all of this done. Um, like, a lot of times in this hobby in particular, you get to see the end product a lot of times. And I know there are people out there who build. Like, there's one channel I follow that builds the Gundam models. He's doing the Lord's work. Like, I have one Gundam. One. Um, and my stepson's trying to convince me that I will love Gundam. <laughs> um, because they make Transformer models in the same fashion. I've yet to put it together. Like, I'm really loving the Legos. Don't know how I feel yet about the Gundam. Because it's so many little pieces. But there's a couple of channels that do, like, the ASMR snip, 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 snip. And then put them all together. Follow those. Love them. But it still doesn't really give you an accurate idea of how long that takes. Because, uh... The, the boy got a, a perfect Gundam for Christmas. Like, that's, like, the, the best kind of model you can get. And he puts them together pretty fast. It is now February. <laughs> and Christmas was two months ago now. So, uh, yeah. I mean, he can put, like, the, the little ones together, and even the medium ones. I'm done in a day, a weekend, just done. This one is giving him angst. <laughs> so, we're going on, like three or four weeks since he started putting it together at the time I'm recording this. So yeah, so I thought, you know, let, let's give a realistic picture of how long it really takes to do this um, because it is a hobby investment. I mean, I'm a work, I work, <laughs> okay? I work, my husband works, so, like we are people who work. Not just work, I travel for my job. A um, couple weeks out of the month, like I'm in other places. Uh, so having time to sit down, put figures together, paint, like right now, let me give you the idea of what's on my painting docket. So I finished the first five members of my kill team. And not gonna lie, those took me four months. Shouldn't have, but that's just how much time it took. So I had the first five members of my kill team to finish. And then I started playing Aeronautica Imperialis. I run Xenos. So I'm doing Necrons. I think the next ones I'm going to build are Eldar. And I'll probably be it for Aeronautica for me. But those were relatively easy to paint. So I finished six of those planes and their bases. Got those painted. But up now what I'm painting is I've got some 1 16th scale of spy family, Yor, Anya, and Lloyd. Uh, Yor and Anya are almost done, but I, Yor is so fragile. Every time I touch her, something breaks, and it is frustrating me to no end. <laughs> I'm like, I'm scared to finish her. Like, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just finish Anya and her little stand, and then Yor eventually. But I also have 3D prints of Ashitaka and San, Studio Ghibli from uh, Princess Mononoke. I've got those as well. Uh, Ashitaka is riding Yakul and there's a boar arm chasing him. And then I've got San with one of the wolf pups. I got those to paint. Those are completely unpainted. No, I started the boar arm on Ashitaka. I was learning how to airbrush. Um, I still might go back and hand brush that, but we'll see. Uh, but then next after those, I have a whole bunch of little gnomes <laughs> that I plan to paint. Um, those are not even for me. They're for my husband. He does D&D. So I'm painting little gnomes for him. And I've got like 15 of those to paint, but those actually get painted pretty quickly. But then I got the next five members of my kill team I need to paint um, and they're in pieces. Uh, they're not, they, like, they've been distributed, but they're not together. And then there's a box down there, a Horus Heresy box. And I have to build, paint, all of those. And for Valentine this year, my husband is 3D printing me my own Titan. I know, right? <gasps> but that's going to have to be primed, sanded, painted, and the whole thing. So, like, you can stack up a whole list of things you need to do. And finding time to do them is what's difficult. And sometimes when you jump into a hobby like this, you may not know exactly what the time commitment will be. And I believe in operating in honesty. Like, let the people know what something's going to be like so they can decide if it's something that they want to be a part of. So, what? let's talk about it. 
So let's start with some comparing between finished pieces and unfinished pieces. So this is a, um, a Felder uh, bag. It's for carrying, you know, miniature models. Uh, this, whoa, yep, it's a different angle because her whole little setup fell over. Whatever, life happens. Anywho, this is a Felder bag. So it, the reason I have this one, they come bigger, or smaller, or whatever. But this one specifically had cutouts that fit my Aeronautica Imperialis uh, flyers because I fly Necrons and they are a weird shape when it comes to this game. So actually, I think I'm going to do a little rearranging here. So I said I had to paint the flyers and their bases. Why are these, oh, magnets. We'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> magnetic together but yeah so there's the flyers themselves and then there's the bases that they stand on so this is actually the first one that I painted and he is complete and I actually painted this at a paint party night at our like what six months ago at um, a little hobby shop that we go to that I always talk about and I've never told y'all the name of uh, but they do like paint parties where they'll theme it out once a month and then you show up, you paint a figure based on the theme. Like, that's where, like, the little dinosaurs came from. Like, this guy, the, my Robotech, I'm sorry, Battletech, <laughs> came from there. You know, dinosaurs came from there. This little knight on a frog, that's where I painted them. And I leave them in the state that I ended up painting them for the night. But there's all those. So... Yeah, that, that's where we paint. But that's where this came from. And I hadn't played Aeronautica, but being a Warhammer person, they were just doing planes that night, just any kind of plane. So it, they, some were from Aeronautica, some were from other games that I can't name because I don't play those games. But they had a Necron flyer. I was like, well, I like Warhammer. I like Necrons. I'll paint the Necron. So I painted this one first, and it came out pretty good. And that's a magnet that's in there for its stand. I'll show you what that's for in a second. But um, after that, my husband, actually, after he painted some planes, he started playing Aeronautica, because that night they had a demo of the Aeronautica game, and he really liked it. So a few months later, he got me on the bandwagon, um, and they had like four more models they hadn't sold. So I went ahead and bought those 3D prints and painted them up as well. They look pretty good, and these, these are the finished product. This is them all done. The way I got the stenciling done, I have a short on my channel somewhere, but that is actually an earring I laid on there and then sprayed, yeah, used as a stencil. Um, but yeah, I just painted six more flyers uh, for the game. And yeah, now I have, you know, a bunch of Aeronautica Imperialis little, little Necrons. My next ones I'm going to paint are going to be Eldar. But I got a nice little bin. To do all six of those, when I actually started sitting down to do it, I finished in about three weeks. Uh, between work and everything else. And that's probably like an hour and a half of painting twice a week for six weeks is how long that took. But I also, they, they have these stands that they come on that they need to be on because it shows you like your speed that you're going, your altitude, and then which way you're pointing. So most people go out and customize their stands. This one's not perfect and it bothers me so much. I used a, a metallic gloss at the end when I was done because I painted these neon colors. And I think it looks great, but that one has a smudge on it. But the reason the magnets exist is so they can stand. So these, I'll be honest, these took me, because I used neon colors, that was a mistake. I primed the base and then started alternating the neons it took like oh god seven layers of the neon and I still couldn't get the color perfect that's when I made the decision to do the metallic sheen at the end and now everything looks really nice and even but to get your plane to stand up these don't come with magnets we added these but now you stick it on the stand there's the magnet at the bottom and boom and now you can point them any way you want look you can even bank them and make them look like they're doing cool stuff yeah you know it's cool you'd make the sound too <laughs> um but that's what the finished product looks like looks like six planes the bases and we just added the magnets to these last night like i had them st stuck on plastic and they kept falling off so a lot of people when they do something that has to be aerial like this they'll use uh, a magnet setup this is just a magnet ball attached to uh the little plastic spike and then there's a little receiver. So we had to drill a very shallow hole in the back of these. Got to be careful not to go through the other side. This was the first one I painted. So it was not the one we tested the magnet set up on because I can't, I painted this at the paint party. So I can't replicate the mixed colors that I use because I used their paints that night and they were all pro plan. Um, I didn't use my own paints that night. So, but yeah, it ended up looking pretty boss. So that's, that's just one set. Um, and then the others that I know have been showcased a lot on my channel, I can't wait to finish the next five, are these guys. 
so that's a finished space marine and i gotta say we're gonna turn him around i mean show yourself off honey let the people see you turn let the people see you turn i mean he looks great I, i'm not even gonna like act like i didn't do a great job with these um but i am a very meticulous painter um the only thing that was airbrushed on these no joke the only thing that i used an airbrush for on any of these models was their primer that's it everything else is done by hand um just into like the hit all of that is by hand um, I've dry brushed a lot. I've done inking. I've done relief shadow and all of that. But I, I did it all by hand. Everyone doesn't do that. Um, but I'm just letting you see the finished product and the detail uh, that goes into these. Um, uh, I like to paint mine in a way that I would be able to play with anyone. Uh, because different tournaments have different rules, like I've said before, on literally like what your figures look like. Like not how good your paint job was, but how many paints you applied. Um, so when I think about these, they have, let me count, one, two, three, four. Like this one has like eight different colors on him, which makes him a really good piece. Uh, I've, I've, the, the minimum requirement I've ever seen is three. Now, if you're just playing among friends, no one cares. <laughs> you know, you're with your buddies. No one cares if no one cares if they're even put together when it's just your friends. But if you go to like a real tournament or something, there's usually a minimum paint level requirement. So I try to make sure that I hit them all. But then also that that detail, like these weren't together when I painted them. I painted them in pieces, then put them together. But that that is me, <laughs> you know. And there's also like you know when I say I'm painting little gnomes and stuff. These are for um, Dungeons and Dragons, painting little gnomes and dwarves. Actually, my husband painted this one, so I can't even take credit for that. Where's one that I painted? No, he did this one too. He was making one that looked like me. <laughs> you see the resemblance? Okay, all right. <laughs> His um, Fortnite character looks like me too it's hilarious he was playing one night and i walked in behind him and it was like his character was like a black girl with purple hair and butterfly wings and i was like is that me <laughs> but it was hilarious like what what did i get in the Fortnite? but this is one that i painted and these don't take long I mean, there's only like five colors on her but they little i mean for scale and size like look at her and look how big this dude is yeah so Sometimes how long it takes to paint something is just going to depend on your dexterity. Oh, this is one my husband painted. I can't take credit for that one. But you can actually, you can see our very different painting styles. He does a lot of speed painting type things. There's one, I think, I can't remember which one of us did this one. I feel like it was me um, because I usually get the girls and he gets the guys. And he did this one as well. But when you hold our pieces side by side, so where is one that I painted? So you can see we have very different techniques. Like his, you can tell he does a lot of dry brushing. He does a lot of airbrushing. I do not. I paint every bit by hand unless it is the primer coat or a base coat. Um, after that, I do everything individually by hand. And we actually have a friend in our Aeronautica group who doesn't even do that. <laughs> he actually does everything, even priming by hand. And I'll be honest, his work is insane. And if you're watching, dude, like, I don't know how you do it. But it's, it's amazing. But then there is the, the blank figure. So these are some primed. Uh, the other half of my kill team primed. So this is how they start. So these are a little bit more put together. I was experimenting. So my first set, I painted basically everything in pieces um, and put it together. These, I'm going to try painting them a little more whole. And then putting them together. But this is primed. This is completely painted. You can see the to go from this to go from this to this. Oh, some time. I mean, I would I would wager that each one of these got five hours of individual attention. Everyone doesn't do that. That's me. <laughs> I'm I'm weird that way. That that's just how I roll. But I've got to go from this to this but this is a primed piece and I didn't even completely put these together the reason I was okay with it is because when I was pulling the other half on like when I'm going to show you in a second but when you're you're snipping them apart uh depending on what kind of box set you're doing like this is specifically a kill team you get multiple choices and legs and arms and stuff like that some pieces come completely together some pieces like like this uh little I don't know what is that called this piece of cloth right here 
in some of the pieces, this is separate. But for this guy, this whole bottom piece was solid. There was no point in me separating this. And then this whole top half, I, I, I fudged that. But his little... His little arm piece is gonna cover that mistake, <laughs> but it looks good on this side. So we'll just we'll just see him. Um, we're just gonna see him from that side. <laughs> but yeah, so it it it's work. Like even these little backpack jetpack pieces on these guys that are painted. I painted those separately, then stuck them on. Um, yeah, so up to you and then I've got five of these to paint so I'm doing them a little bit differently just to see if I like that style because I've got I got a hundred figures back there I'm going to end up painting so I was trying to experiment thinking ahead because I knew my husband was going to give me that heresy box for Christmas um and I paused there because like as I was talking like messages were coming through and it distracted me my bad um but um you know I was trying to see like what's the best way is it doing everything separate is it having them more together? I don't know. I haven't done these yet, so I don't know if I like that way better. I'll find out. But because these were the second half of putting pieces together, I had less choices and legs and arms and stuff. So some of the stuff, I just went ahead and put it together because it was together. Like, I'll show you what I mean. So like this guy, you can see his legs. All of that's one solid piece. And then his um, torso went on top of it. But where's one where it was all separate? Where are you? You can't even see it on him. I paint all these pieces that you can even see. Oh, this is a good one. So he's got the black cloth, and then there's this gold thing behind him. These were three. So the legs, this piece, and that were three separate pieces. So I painted all of them separately. But when it doesn't come separate, there was no point in not doing it. I'm going to be stuck painting it that way anyway. So just trying out some different painting techniques. You're only going to know what way you like to do it unless you do it. At some point in the future, if my channel ever pays for itself, I'll get a camera set up where you can watch me paint. Please like, comment, and subscribe. But we're going to tuck these back in because I'm actually, um, this evening after I work out, I will go to our local hobby shop and it is our Aeronautica night. It used to be a night that I went in and painted while he played Aeronautica, but then I ended up liking the game. So this is my Aeronautica bag uh, with my kill team. So it will go with me tonight. So we're just going to set that over here. And my other little box of Marines. Now this is cool. <laughs> this is extra, but you need dice when you play these games, whether it's D&D, &D, um whatever. Oh, wait, I need to get, I need to get these back out because you guys see them together. So I get dice themed to what I'm doing. Um, so I play, the games I play, of course, are Warhammer. Um, I play the, uh, the Aeronautica, you know, with Warhammer, I do like one page rules and, you know, I stay in the sci-fi side. I'm not onto the fantasy, uh, side. And I play Magic the Gathering. Those are like my big tabletop games, unless it comes put together. But I like, for the big games that I play, I like to get dice that are themed to what I'm doing. And my husband found these for me. He gave them to me as a surprise. They are spiky with blood splats on them. Oh my God. Because these are chaos word bearers. So, and he knows the word bearers are my favorite legion. Um, so he got me dice that are themed to the Legion. So like, this is highly recommended. It just makes the game that much more fun and a little more special. So if you, if you could do it, like this is now, look, they, these are weapons. <laughs> look at them. Oh my God. They're so dangerous. Like don't, don't throw these at people. Like you, they're, they're, they're dangerous. Um, but I love having like all my little elements thematically run together um and these are so sharp they don't even live in one of my magic boxes i've got a leather pouch for them um the bag that they came in was all ate up by the time <laughs> it got shipped so yeah i can feel this getting heavier like even in my hands the sharpness oh my god um but these live in this leather pouch but they they match um my uh my, my uh, space marines, my word bearers. But even for Aeronautica, like you saw that I had kind of a, I'm opening the bag again. I was going to do something else and now I'm distracted. Um, I'm going to put the mouse over here. <laughs> my computer keeps popping back on. Um, but even for Aeronautica, this is another dice bag. I needed, you need large dice and small dice, but I got dice that match my flyers. So I'll pull out one of the bases here. So basically, these are the primary colors that are on all my bases. I got dice to match. And when I do my Eldar, they're probably going to be in the kind of the same color scheme. I mean, they won't look exactly the same, obviously, because the planes are completely differently shaped. But it'll stay in the same vein because these are the dice that are for Aeronautica. So little stuff like that actually makes it more fun. Uh, but it took me a while to find matching dice. Everyone doesn't want matching dice. 
I want matching dice. <laughs> so, anywho, let's get to the meat of this and let, let's put some Terminators together. So this is a Terminator squad. You've seen this before on my channel. I was going through just all the Warhammer stuff. I haven't put any of these together yet. And I didn't know if I was going to, but uh, these are these are loyalists, I believe. Yeah, these are loyalists. They are probably most likely destined to be Ultramarines. My two loyalist armies I'm going to build will be Ultramarines and Salamanders, Vulcan Libs, and Rebute's Not Wrong. That's how I feel. Um, but then also my two Chaos Legions, because I need to, my next kill team, uh, after I'm done, because there's always more to paint, after I'm done with my um, Word Bearers, the next five, my next uh, Space Marine kill team will be Chaos Emperor's Children. And then the final kill team that I want will be um, a, a sororitas, a novitiate. So I'm going to get that. that. That'll be it for my kill team. I'll be done with that because that, that box oh, is going to be work. But this is a Terminator squad. So there are five of them in here, I believe. It's a little bit different than that kill team because that kill team, you get all these options in legs and heads and arms and stuff to result in 10 figures. This one, it's pretty much done. Now, we're not going to build all of them right now. One, because I didn't bring the glue in here because I'm not getting glue on my pretty little desk. Um, but decals, I never use decals. I don't like stickers at all. Like, not even pricing stickers on stuff. We all have a weird thing about us. That's my weird thing. Hate sticky paper. Um, so I never use decals. But I, I can hand print these things. So they'll all come with instructions. And on the back of the box, you can see what you're supposed to end up with. Like... The other ones, you get a few more options. So it's the variations, well, the variations can vary. <laughs> but you get the instructions on how to put them together. These are pretty simple, but look at all those little bits. So I'm going to cut one of these out for you in real time so you can see how long it takes. So this is a Terminator. And the other guys came with a whole book of instructions. This is a simple one. I'll do a more complicated one when I go for my next uh, kill team. So when I get to either doing the novitiate squad or once I get to doing the emperor's children, one of those will do a whole, put the whole daggum thing together. We might even do it as a live <laughs> so you can really see it in real time. Um, but hopefully by the time I get to that one, my channel will have done something <laughs> and I, I would have been able to purchase a camera to, to allow me to do that. But according to this, I'm going to need Obviously, a head, legs, torso. Oh, the head goes in that way. That's weird. Um, the gun. It looks like they all have similar similar gunnage. Um, and then there's an option number two for the guy carrying the, uh, the coat of arms. So let's see. So I need to find all the pieces. So one is the one with the legs. So this is pretty easy as they go. You need to invest in a good pair of snips. Here's how I advise you get your snips. This is just me. You don't have to listen to me. There is a basic box from um, Games Workshop of their Citadel paints. Basic box. The basic box of paints with all the colors you need to get started. And I mean, I forget how much it is, so don't quote me. Because depending on where you live, you may or may not be getting a, a local discount. So I'm not going to give you a price. But for a bunch of paint, it's not too expensive. But it comes with these. And these are really good little snips. These are the ones that I use for just about everything. They are... Citadel branded, hashtag not sponsored, um, obviously not, you've seen the size of my channel, um, but yeah, they, they're really good little snips, um, if you, you don't have paint and snip money yet, you can twist them out, that is totally, I would not use scissors, though, don't use scissors, you can use one of them, them little exacto knives, that might work, but don't use scissors, you'll ruin them, so first things first is the legs, he needs legs, so we're going to snip him out, and I'm not going to cut the video at all from here so y'all can see how long this really takes and how confusing it gets. And this is a simple one. I just squeezed my thumb. Ow. So, legs are free. He has legs. This is all one piece. So, like I was saying, like, if the to make his legs was multiple bits, I might consider, uh, you know, saving the bits separately so I could get in there and paint everything. But this is one solid piece. I don't have to worry about that. Uh, next thing he needs, oh, he's going to need one of every, look at these itty bitty little pieces. I'm not sure I'm cutting that out yet. It's going to get lost on my desk. <laughs> all right. So these are all the heads. All their heads are the same. So we'll cut, cut them out ahead. Hmm. I'm not going to do that up in front of the camera. I'm going to do that low on my desk because it's a small piece and I'll drop it. So head is now cut out. 
Got him ahead. Let's see here. Oh, and he needs a shoulder piece. So we got to have pauldrons. He gets a blank one. And he gets one with a skull on it. Oh, it's got a skull. <gasps> Are these chaos? Can I make these chaos? Well, they're Terminators, so that would make sense why they are uh, have skulls on them. I do loves me the chaos. So these are small too, so that, that's one. And then I've got to cut out the other side that has a little skull on it. Now these I will keep separate because remember this, this is unprimed. So when I prime them and paint them, these little bits I will keep separate so they can completely be painted all the way around before I attach them. Will you be able to see the inside of his pauldron? No, you won't. You cannot see the inside of the shoulder piece, but I will know. And from a full 360 view, he will be perfectly painted. That matters to me. So we got legs, we got head, we got shoulder pieces. I'm gonna leave his little cross for later because that will get lost on the mess that is my desk. I just rearranged it and it's already a mess. So next he needs a weapon. Mm. Let's see here. Do they all get the same weapon? Oh no, they get different weapons, but they just all go on the same side. Okay, so what weapon do I want him to have? Well, we'll use the weapon that's in the picture. So he's got like, I think that's like a minigun. So we'll cut out the minigun. Here it is. So it's in a whole different little stack here. So we'll clip him out. Now I will say what some people do is they leave these on here and prime them this way. That's a hack. Am I going to do that? No, because I told y'all what kind of painter I am. I can't do that. I must do the whole thing. <laughs> I must I must do them individually. It's just, it's just how I am. But you can leave these on here and just prime them and then snip them out. That's totally allowed. So now we have his upside down gun. It goes this way. So we have a weapon. What do I need next? So, oh, if he has this weapon, it looks like he needs to be carrying his ammo. So he's got a little ammo pack somewhere. Let's check a look here. Luckily, this one's not huge. So not too hard to find all the bits. The, that kill team, oh, I thought I was, I was done with life <laughs> doing that. Oh, my God. That was so much work. I don't see that little weapon. And th this is the realness of it. So you think you have everything you need in one spot. And then you start looking. You start looking. And uh, and then you look back at the thing to see if you're looking at the right thing. So I was trying to find this little... But I don't see any anything that looks like that bit of ammo on here. Unless this folds. Which I'm assuming it does. So I'm gonna cut this out because I think that's it. And then it's gonna fold itself. Nope, nope, that, that's not a fold point. No, that's, I lied. No, we're not gonna do that. Cause what I think happens is like that's the front and like that's the other side of it. Uh-oh. And this is the part where she got confused cause she was trying to show off and then got owned. All right, so. His jet pack, we'll go ahead and cut that out because that for sure I know what it is. So jet pack, all right, we have a jet pack. He needs that, oh, he needs, oh, this is the fanciest one that's in the example. Well, no wonder it's being a jerk to me. Okay, so he gets this nice little neck hole thing because he's fancy. He's a fancy one. So that, that's where that little bit of variation will get you when you're cutting things out and why it's so important to double check the instructions. Um, it's very much a measure three times, cut once. And, and actually, now I'll say that again, you can cut all the pieces out, but you're going to get confused trying to keep them separated. Um, it's very much a measure three times, glue once, because you can dissolve glue, but once you put these little plastic pieces together, the, on all the, and you use that like real plastic or resin glue, depending on what they're made of, they don't come apart. You can't usually get them apart without breaking them, unless you've got a real good dissolver, but sometimes the stuff that dissolves glue will dissolve your figure, depending on what you have. Um, so, be prepared. Oh, he gets a saw, too. Well, he just gets everything. Oh, oh, there's a whole little thing over here that I covered up, and that's probably why I couldn't find what I wanted. Is this where his little bullets are? No, it's not. But he gets one of these little saws, too. So, that's cool. I want a gun with a saw on the end. 
That stuff only exists in movies and sci-fi. Snip. Eh. Snip. All right, so he snipped out. So let me see here. He needs one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces to be complete. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I know I didn't cut his EDB little star out. I don't have his little weapon. I don't have his uh, little uh, um, bullet pack. Because I can't figure out which it is. It might. Oh, this is it. I found it. That's the bullet pack. I think so. E there. That's it. Yay. Do, 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 do. And snip. So now I've got all of the pieces that make this guy together. Now here's the hard part. How do you keep this in order? This is how I keep mine in order as I'm snipping and putting them together. So this was for my last five Chaos Kill Team. I have a set of labels and little and um, little clear storage boxes that I got on Amazon. So this will get a new label uh, for Terminators, Ultramarines Terminators. And then check this out. It has five compartments in it. I know. My other Chaos Kill Team that I haven't done yet, they have a box. Ha ha ha. So the set of parts that go with this guy... He gets his own compartment now. I know, right? She's a little smart sometimes. So we're going to separate these guys out. And now that is one dude and all of his pieces. I know where every piece to this uh, figure is located now. And this doesn't want to peel off. So I'll probably use some alcohol to get this label off. But um, get the labels you want. Uh, I got some that were like these chalkboard type. Um, so I, I write on them with a white marker. It stands out really well. And it's aesthetically pleasing. Um, and then, of course, they all get a stand. I don't open these until I need them. But I have to do that four more times <laughs> to complete the set. And remember, they each have like little extras to them. Like some dude is going to get this. Somebody's going to get the, the coat of arms. Somebody's going to get this bullet pack. Um, and the reason that I don't snip and glue right away is I triple check that I got the right pieces for the right figure. Because once you start cutting them up and mixing them up, it gets harder to distinguish. And then once you start gluing them together, once they're glued, you just might as well make peace <laughs> with whatever you did. And I'm not going to say that there's really a wrong like especially the kill team boxes and that box behind me that I'm going to do a whole thing for uh when I open it finally but there's so many options to your figures um that so like if you pick the wrong weapon the heavy air quotes or whatever you meant to make this kind of guy and you make a different one it's okay it's okay unless you plan on playing in tournaments where those kind of details matter and the first time you build an army, just go ahead and give yourself the grace to make mistakes. I told y'all the first time I started building this stuff, oh my God, it was so bad. I thought I knew, I didn't even know I needed to prime them. I thought you could just start slapping paint on these things. And I was like, why isn't the paint sticking? Like it was a mess. <laughs> so give yourself a break to learn and like catch your local hobby shop or something on sale. Like get on the eBay Get on the, the Amazon, find a set that's not expensive that you may still want, but one that you don't mind practicing on. Um, and you might have friends that have a whole bunch of extra pieces that'll let you practice on them so you can get used to the, the snippy, the cutty, and all the other stuff. But these bits are going to live in their box until it's time <laughs> for me to finish building these. Um, these are probably... I don't know, about three months in my rotation of when they're going to get built. Like, I literally have it scheduled out what's next. After I finish Anya and Yor, I'm done with those for a while. I'm not going to jump into Void. I'm going to finish out my Gnomes, then pick back up on my Kill Team, finish out my Kill Team, then I'll do Void. When am I going to do Ashitaka and San? Oh, no. Eventually. But they're, they're in the rotation as well because I really want to get my box done. If you really get into liking painting, liking figures, 3D printing, the whole thing, whether it's Warhammer, uh, Battletech, another, whatever it happens to be, just be aware that if you decide you like it, it takes time. <laughs> it takes time. So to snip all of these and build them all, 
if I wasn't trying to film and talk at the same time, I could probably do it in about an hour for these five um, and, and get them all separated. Uh, to get them all primed, that won't take any time at all. I'll get them all primed once I have them separated. I'll prime them individually uh, with their bits so I can keep them separate. Um, prime them and then, you know, that'll take me. I'll do that in an afternoon after work one day um, and then eventually paint them. Now the painting uh, depends on your style of painting. I do everything by hand. I don't really rely on the airbrush very much I, other than base coating. So depends on how you want to paint. There are people out there who are real good with an airbrush. They can do things with an airbrush that some people can do with a, a regular brush. And there are people who can do with a regular brush what you would think would only happen with an airbrush. So give yourself uh, the leeway to pick out the style that works for you. And there are oh, so many types of airbrushes out there. If you don't want to spend $200 on a Grex airbrush, get you one of those $40, $50, like, portable USB airbrushes. Like, those are great. I have one. I got my husband one for Valentine's. He doesn't know it yet. But by the time this comes out, he would have gotten it. So I can say it here. <laughs> you know, those are good for um, practicing. Apparently, they can be used for makeup, too. But I cannot see myself spraying makeup on my face. Um... But yeah, so there, there's a ton of options there. Um, but that's just what I wanted to do today. A little different, a little haphazard, a little scattered, but yeah, yeah, that's how I am. I hope you enjoyed that. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.